More than 100 million people in the U.S. are under heat alerts today. Dangerous highs could reach 110 degrees across the southern plains in Texas. 80 percent of the people will see a high above 90 degrees over the next week. Now, in Europe, the U.K. reached its highest recorded temperature ever, just above 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Buckingham Palace guards were desperate for relief, breaking from their typically stoic stance for a sip of water, as you can see here. 21 countries across Europe issued heat warnings amid triple digit temperatures. Wildfires continue to rage across Western Europe. Passengers aboard this train in Spain were caught between a blaze spreading on both sides of the track. Let's bring in CNN's Nina Dos Santos in London and CNN's Ben Wiedemann is in Italy for us. So Nina, first to you, what are you seeing in London? Well, the capital is essentially paralyzed by this heat wave. Yes, parts of local transport are working. They're not air conditioned. Only 50% of London transport is actually air conditioned. But if you're trying to get in and out of the capital, King's Cross Station behind me, the main rail hub, you can forget it because there are no railway services operating. Just a skeleton amount. This is because as authorities are so concerned that the tracks could overheat, that they could actually buckle when the trains go over them. We've seen airline services be affected as well. One of the main airports in London had to cease services to mend its runway after it melted at one point. So scorching were these temperatures. This is the first time that we've seen the UK ever record temperatures in excess of 40 degrees Celsius. As you said, the mercury hit a new record, 40.3 Celsius earlier today. That's 104 and a half. Fahrenheit and uh, essentially the services here aren't used to coping with this but what's really worrying people across the British capital is the spectre of wildfires Alison these wildfires of course we see year after year in a very grave way in southern Europe are now starting to happen outside of the capital. There's a fire ba blazing about three and a half miles from where I am in the east that has caused the fire brigade to declare a major incident so this is a country that's going to have to get used to more years, climate change scientists say, uh, more years of 40 degree plus heat, and it's going to have to plan in the long run for it, even if normally we're not used to this kind of temperature. Alison? Yeah, these pictures are unbelievable. You see the map where uh, across Europe, the fire icons, there's so many across the continent. Let's go to Italy now. Ben, you're there. These high temperatures uh, could stick around until the middle of next week. What are you seeing? Yeah, in fact, uh, there is no rain in the forecast here, and it's going to continue to be hot. It's, I must point out that Italy, it's not unusually hot. This is, it's normally hot at this time of year. What is different is this country is struggling through its worst drought in 70 years. And a variety of circumstances have come together, whereby, for instance, we're in northern Italy, uh, which usually has a lot of water that comes from melting snow in the Alps. Uh, but during the winter, there was very little snowfall there. There was very little spring rainfall uh, here. So this area Area, which is an important agricultural area, is going through a drought. We've spoken to farmers here who say that they expect to lose anywhere between 50 and 70 percent of their crops. The Po River, which is Italy's major river, is at a historically low level. You can almost, in some areas, just walk across it because it's just a trickle uh, in the middle. And this has created a situation whereby there's going to be competition between sort of use by civilians, water use by farmers, water use by manufacturers. And of course, much of the electricity generated in this part of Italy comes from hydroelectric power plants, uh, which are normally powered by that water that comes from the Alps. So this is sort of climate change on steroids going on here. And the officials are scrambling to try to find out not only short-term solutions, but long-term solutions as well. Victor, Allison. Uh, Nina Dos Santos, Ben Wiedemann, thank you very much. I mean, it just looks so grave, both of their situations there as it is across Europe and the U.S. Yeah, let's bring in now Bob Ward. He's the Policy and Communications Director at the Grantham Research Institute on Climate Change and the Environment. Bob, good to have you. I, I think um, 
you know, Ben makes an important point that it's hot this time of the year typically, but what we see in London with the tracks buckling, potentially runways melting, is that so much of Europe is unprepared for sustained temperatures at this level. Well, Southern Europe is used to dealing with hot temperatures, but even there, they're getting record-breaking temperatures. But London is just not prepared for this at all. And remember, today's temperatures are a full one and a half degrees warmer than anything we've had before. And we've had widespread failures of our infrastructure, rails buckling, mechanical breakdowns, electrical failures. But we've also got lots of people who are dying across the country uh, because uh, they have underlying health impacts and their homes overheat in this weather. Um, Bob, just to give our U.S. audience a little bit more context, there are so many stats here that I'm struck by. London has reached 104 degrees Fahrenheit today. The city of Atlanta, which we here in the U.S. know to be very hot, has only had four days in its 150 year history of, of, uh, of weather hotter than 104. And London is the same latitude as Calgary, Canada. And so it yep. is, of course, mind blowing for Londoners. So it's going to take, you say, for them um, a mindset shift. But wh what are they supposed to do? How are they supposed to get their heads around this? Well, they've been warned for a long time that climate change is driving this. Heat waves are becoming more intense and more frequent. I have to say that most of us are shocked that we got to 40 degrees this year rather than in 10 years time, but we knew where it was coming and we have to rebuild the cities and the, uh, uh, particularly like London, to cope with the heat. We need buildings that can cope with the heat. At the moment, they lit terrible housing stock. They are terrible at keeping the heat in during the winter and terrible at keeping the heat out during the summer. And we don't have uh, traditionally shutters and blinds on windows to keep out the heat. People tend to open their windows in hot weather here and it just lets all the hot weather in. So we need to adapt our buildings, but we also need to educate people about how to uh, protect themselves in, in these extreme heat events. And Bob, is this emergency across Europe hastening that turn to policy to approach it long term? Well, I'd like to think so, but we've had um, over the past uh, week or so a series of uh, hustings with potential candidates to be our next prime minister, and two of them wanted to weaken efforts to cut greenhouse gas emissions. So there really is a disconnect between the reality that people are experiencing on the ground and what policy fit makers think is the pri priority. And unfortunately, that is the same in many countries around the world, including, of course, the United States. Yes, uh, understood. Bob Ward, thank you very much for trying to help us understand what's happening in London and beyond.